This is the all new 2023 Chevrolet Colorado Trail Boss. Today we're going to test it off road for the very first time. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. This is the 2023 Chevrolet Colorado. Now this is of course a mid-size truck and it competes with the Toyota Tacoma, the Ford Ranger, and the Nissan Frontier. I am personally a huge fan of this segment. And in fact, I personally own a 2022 Ford Ranger Tremor Edition. So I'm very interested how well this particular trim stacks up because this is the budget version of the off-road Colorado. Yeah, you don't have to get a ZR2 to get a rear locker. So how does this stack up against the competition? We're going to find out, but first let's check out all the features. In terms of power, Chevy is offering the new Colorado with one engine, a turbocharged 2.7 liter inline four cylinder, but it is available in three different outputs. The LT gets the basic 237 horsepower, 259 pound foot setup. The Trail Boss and Z71 trims get the 310 horsepower, 390 pound foot setup. The ZR2, of course, gets a torque bump all the way to 430 pound-feet of torque. And to confuse things even more, you can option higher output engines on lower trims if you want. You can even do it with the work truck. No matter which engine you get, the only transmission is a revised 8-speed automatic. A 2-speed transfer case with automatic 4-wheel drive is an option on select trims. You also get a variety of drive modes, which we'll check out later in the video. We don't have economy numbers, but something around 19 city and 25 MPGs on the highway is expected. It can run on regular fuel, but will perform best with premium. The model that we're going to focus on today is, of course, the Trail Boss. And this isn't just a sticker package. It actually has a 3-inch wider track over the LT and work truck versions. The Trail Boss comes standard with 18-inch wheels wrapped in all-terrain tires. But what we have here is the optional 20-inch with all-terrain package. Uh, these are Bridgestone Duelers. They are a mud and snow rated, but they are not three peak. They're a 27560 R20 fitment. Nice thing is that when you actually configure your own trail boss, you can option mud terrains, which is a good choice if that's the kind of world you live in. Now, if you're looking for a variety of cab options, you're not going to find them in Colorado. You only can buy it in a crew cab configuration with a short bed. But I think for a lifestyle truck, and honestly, that's what I think the trail boss is, that's fine. If you're looking for something that has like a short cab or an extended bed, you're going to have to move up to the Silverado if you want to stick with Chevrolet. We do have some nice stuff here. Love these flared fenders. We also get the sidestep that's included standard on all trims. Helps us get to the inside there. In the back, we have this smooth dropping tailgate. And there's also a neat trick here. They have class exclusive in tailgate storage. How's that? It's even watertight. We don't have a lot of time here, so we're going to blast through some of the details of this truck that Chevy provided for testing. Prices you see it here with a number of upgrades, 43,510 US dollars, including destination. It's interesting that our Trail Boss test truck didn't include the optional skid plate, but because this does have a standard two inch lift, maybe that won't be as big of a deal today. Front suspension is independent. In back, you get solid axles and leaf springs. This trim also gets a standard Eaton G80 auto locker. Maximum ground clearance is 9.5 inches. Towing is maxed out at 7,700 pounds. Payload, a generous 1,587 pounds. Step inside and the first thing you'll notice is a complete lack of buttons. On this and lower trims, lots of the controls have been moved to the infotainment screen. Even the headlights are controlled on the touchscreen, which in my opinion is not okay. Incidentally, the headlights on the Trail Boss are old school halogens. No fancy LEDs here. To get LEDs and more buttons, you need to move up to the Z71. But at least this is a really nice touchscreen. It's big, clear, and has snappy response. Google navigation is included. Chevy has done a great job of including lots of great safety equipment across all the Colorado trims for 2023. This one has lane detection, blind spot identification, adaptive cruise, and collision mitigation, in addition to a complete surround view camera system. One annoyance with this system, though, is that when you do have the camera up, for some reason, they won't let you change drive modes. This seems like a pretty major oversight. 
Speaking of modes, there are several, including tow, off-road, and terrain. Chevy even includes detailed explanations of what they do on screen. We'll play with the off-road modes later. The gauge cluster is a digital display with several useful screens to pick from. Climate is only single zone in the trail boss. The seats are power adjustable, but they're otherwise pretty basic. Okay, that's enough details for now. Let's take this for a drive. First, we're gonna hit the dirt and then we're gonna hit the highway. The trail we're on today really isn't that difficult, but it should be challenging enough to give a demonstration of this vehicle's capabilities. Okay, setting up the vehicle, um, there's a few things we can do. We can change this digital display uh, to be speedo, trip, all that kind of stuff. No, I don't want that. Yes, that's the one I want, the four-wheel drive uh, off-road configuration, which gives me pitch and roll on the left, steering angle on the right, also very boldly shows me how the transfer case is currently engaged. And then I'm gonna put the camera on up there so I can see forward. And that's pretty much it. Let's move on out. So I am just in two-wheel drive right now rolling along so it is nice that this trail boss actually has a two inch lift over uh, the lower trims uh, if you go all the way up to the zr2 that one gives you a three inch lift which is pretty incredible but the zr2 does cost more than fifty thousand dollars when properly equipped and uh, that's a lot of money for a midsize suspension does feel a little stiff i do feel like i'm getting a little tossed around here i really enjoy the roads down in san diego uh, and on its outskirts because these are like desert mountainside roads are very dry you got lots of rocks and uh, you got some nice washouts which kind of add to the challenge which I like you know if you're going on a road like this you don't want it to be too easy so yeah I am just doing two-wheel drive here so far now this is the mid spec motor so output is actually pretty good it is a large four-cylinder though, 2.7 liters. I had to look on the spec sheet just to make sure that it wasn't a six. But no, this is the same four-cylinder that first appeared in the Silverado. As we climb up here, we're gonna eventually hit an obstacle, so let's play with the different drive modes. And there are quite a few on this truck. Uh, flicking through modes, it's not doing anything. Oh, right. That brings me to one of the issues with this truck. You have to, it has like layered menus so when I had up the control screen it doesn't go away I can't change my drive modes I have to exit it and then I can change my drive modes uh, because I'm in two-wheel drive I can set the drive mode uh, to off-road that will work uh, but I cannot do terrain which is the more extreme off-road uh, setting when I go there it just exits me back to normal <laughs> I mean, so far this trail has been actually really easy. There's been no reason to use any of the drive modes. Uh, but what I'm gonna go ahead and do right now is switch it into four high, uh, cause I know we have some more stuff coming up. Transfer case has switched. Uh, and at this point I can now go into the more extreme terrain mode. And one of the biggest differences with terrain mode is that once I start crawling here, if I lift off, it like wants to stop the truck immediately. I don't get any free roll. Uh, and that's because if you're on tricky objects like large boulders and stuff like that, you don't want to free roll off. You don't want to just keep moving. Uh, so this really helps keep the truck in control. Okay, so four high, plugging along on this ridge road in San Diego. Can't really think of anything better I'd rather be doing. Although maybe in a truck with a better interior, because this interior, it's pretty low end. This is based on the LT truck, uh, which is the entry level model, uh, one step above work truck. But you know, as far as normal versions of the truck, this is a low end version of it, just with all the off-road gear. And it really feels cut rate on the inside. I hate to say it, uh, but for the money on this thing, uh, it just doesn't, uh, it doesn't impress. <laughs> My Ranger is a much nicer interior for the money. And keep in mind, if you configure this thing nicely, you're looking at $43,000. That's a fair amount of money. They've moved a lot of stuff to the screen and I don't really like it for these type of driving situations. Although on the screen, they do have some cool stuff. Uh, there's an off-road screen that gives you overlanding terrain and Baja screens. Baja is of course more like G-forces. Uh, terrain gives me the same display that I can have in the middle here. Uh, and an overlanding 
helps me with my elevation and my uh, direction, which is really cool. That's a really nicely thought out menu, and that's one of my favorite off-road menu systems. This truck is equipped with a rear locker, and it is an auto locker, so you're not going to find a button anywhere for it. Uh, basically, when it detects that there's a 100 RPM difference between the left and right rear wheels, it'll engage that locker, which pushes power to both wheels equal uh, to help push the vehicle forward. Uh, that way you avoid leaching power out of a wheel without grip. It's a physical way of moving the vehicle forward that is really quite good. Uh, and neat thing here is that on this truck, it also works in two-wheel drive. Uh, likewise, the Ford Ranger also, you can do the locker in uh, two-wheel drive. The Toyota, you cannot. That only works in four low. Just kind of an interesting choice there from Toyota. A little quicker here. Got to watch for big ruts, though. Oof. Of course, we will do a more thorough review of this truck uh, once we get it into our local press fleet. Uh, this is just a first drive. Watch these ruts. Wow, that when you're moving along and you're in terrain mode and you lift off the throttle, that is a pretty... Oh, when I'm over 20. Ah, it engages under 20. So if I'm going at speed, say, 19 miles per hour, I lift off the throttle. Oh, and it's progressive. So it'll bring me to a complete stop. If I'm doing five miles per hour and I stop, chunk very quick. If I'm crawling at one, it let go, stops almost on a dime. Okay, that terrain stop and start is getting kind of annoying. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Uh, let's go to, we'll just keep it in off-road mode for now. Oh yeah, now when I lift off the throttle, free rolls. Oh man, the suspension, a little stiff side. I know I've already said that. Uh, if you, I guess if you really want the nice off-road suspension, you gotta jump up to ZR2 because it has those DSSC shocks that are really quite great. Okay, moving through, moving through here. One thing that I am noticing though, is I'm not getting a lot of kick around in the bed. Uh, a lot of trucks, when you're on uneven surfaces, they kind of kick around left and right. Just not getting a lot of that with this one. Yeah, my Ranger does that horribly. Um, and that's mostly because there's nothing in the bed. I'm just driving with an open bed right now. Obviously, if you put a lot of weight back there, that will improve the situation. Let's go up on the berm. Wee. Okay, here is a little thing where we can test that auto locker. I'm in two wheel drive right now. I'm gonna go into this little ditch here and we're gonna watch that rear wheel and see what it does. Pick it up, I'm stopping on purpose. And when that rotation uh, gets over 100 RPM more, uh, it kicks in, which moves us forward. It's a pretty nice setup, actually. Really easy to use. Uh, we are now going to actually try something that's going to be a little bit more complicated. Obviously not too difficult for this truck, or Chevy wouldn't have brought us out here, but it at least will demonstrate the feature. Here we go. A ditch. Really nice crosscut here. And uh, we're currently at a pitch of 11 degrees. I want to put the camera on. Actually, let's go to four low. I want to see how slow this crawl ratio is. I got to switch to neutral. So in camera view, I get a lot of nice settings. I'm going to do the front view with tracks so I can kind of see exactly where my line should be. I'm just gonna keep the throttle on. I would like actual tire tracks and not just these generic guides, but they do, they do an okay job. Okay, moving in. Now this is where we can really uh, sample that approach angle which improved on this truck over the standard LT. Whoa, whoa, wow, well, that, when that, <laughs> when that eating kicks in, it kicks in. Okay. We got a drain ditch down the middle. Let's play with that. And for this drain ditch, let's go ahead and switch it into terrain mode. That should give me that aggressive slowdown. Pretend like I'm crawling on rocks here. Let's get that front camera going. Uh, camera. There we go. Go and just put a wheel in there. Hope we don't scratch it. So this does have the optional 18s, which honestly, if I'm building a trail boss, I'd rather have 17s. Okay, we're straddling the trail. Looks like the camera's looking pretty good there. 
Seems to be pretty accurate with what we're doing. Up, oh, yep, there's a hole there. Up we go, go. Another hole. There's the back end. And we are clear of the ditch. Away we go. The camera on again so we can avoid big rocks. You know, four low, crawl ratio seems pretty good. Let's go ahead and move back to four high though. We don't need to be slugging along there. Neutral, four high. There we go. Onward. So if you're gonna compare this Colorado versus uh, the best-selling Toyota Tacoma, a TRD Off-Road would be the equivalent on this one, uh, or even the Ford Ranger Tremor. Uh, between the three, I still like my Tremor better. And really it comes down to this interior. Now I like the fact that this has the camera option. Uh, the surround view cameras, very nice. Uh, but like the Ford, at this price point, you don't get heated seats, which honestly would be kind of nice at this price point. Toyota does it. Uh, but just overall, the, I find the Ford interior to be more comfortable, uh, to be nicer. And that Ford interior is not great. It's old. Uh, but this is just really so cut rate feeling. I just feel like it's, it's really a compromise on the inside. And that's unfortunate. Also, these seats, uh, they are cloth and they're kind of okay. Um, I'm not really feeling too much tension back there right now, but they also don't feel like they're, they're supporting me very well. So again, the seats, not great. Uh, yeah, so would I trade in my Ranger for this truck? No. This isn't a particularly steep hill, but we can try the hill descent control system. Um, all I have to do is go into the menu system here find hill descent control, toggle it on. And now when I drive, the speed that I approach, that I lift off the brakes, it'll set it to, right now it's telling me that it's set to one mile per hour, which is nice. If you wanna have you know, the computer's help with a controlled descent, it's a good system to have. Personally, I don't use it very much. Uh, but as for this, yeah, I guess if you're a Chevy fan and you want off-road capability, or you're willing to compromise with this to get the nice camera system, um, you know, this is, I, I would not begrudge anybody to say this is their favorite truck. That would be fine. You know, everybody's into something else. Personally, it, the least they could have done is wrap the steering wheel with a nice synthetic wrap. Uh, maybe put that on the thing, you know, make, make the touch points a little bit nicer. Uh, these are like, every time I touch this wheel, I'm like, wow, that's cheap. <laughs> not okay. <laughs> Of course, if you do go up to the ZR2, you also get an extra bonus in that you get a front locker as well. It's one of the only mid-sized trucks you can get with a front locker outside of getting the Jeep Gladiator, which is obviously catering to a very different type of buyer. Find to, seem to find that uh, Jeep guys like Gladiators and that's about it. <laughs> Not saying they're bad, I'm just saying they're a very uh, they're a very specific type of use vehicle. Now, they're definitely way more into off-road than they are onto the on-road experience. This truck seems to you know, balance capability in both directions pretty nicely. Now we are gonna drive this on the highway in just a little bit. We're not quite there yet, uh, but we will shortly. So what don't I like about this truck? Obviously the interior, not doing it for me. Uh, I love the camera systems, but man, this system, this menu, not being able to change drive modes while you have a camera system up or even uh, the control menu up, it's, it's a little befuddling. It's like, why can't you let me change my drive modes and just tell me on my gauge cluster? That seems reasonable, right? But no, that's not an option. Uh, and I'm just, it's like, why, why? It kind of, you know, it sullies a, what is otherwise a pretty good driving experience. Okay, so I think it's safe to say that off-road, this Trail Boss is extremely capable. Now, this isn't exactly how I would configure it if I wanted to buy one myself. I would go with the, let's see, I would take the standard Trail Boss, I would add one of the safety packages, a tech package, I would definitely go with the 18-inch wheels, and I would probably option the mud terrains, I think. Yeah, I'd probably do that. And there's a few other extras I would add in, and we're looking at a price of just over $43,000 as I would like it. But even that won't improve this interior all that much, which is a little disappointing.
So I did drive a Z71 uh, earlier today before filming, and its interior is actually a lot nicer. And the, and the thing that I liked about that Z71 was that it actually had a lot of buttons. Like right now, I want to adjust my fan speed. There's no button for it. It's, it's just not there. And it's, it's funny, it's like usually lower trims have more buttons, but in this case, they integrated even more into the head unit. Why'd they do that? That's weird, I don't like that. But now let's talk about how this thing handles on pavement, and I'm sorry I don't have a lot of exterior shots, but uh, I'm running late and uh, I'm squeezing this in. I am at the Chevrolet First Drive program and uh, I'm gonna be already quite late for dinner. So we're gonna haul. Let's talk about handling with this thing. Now, as much as I complained about the suspension on dirt as being a little too stiff, here it's actually really nice. I mean, for a leaf spring suspension with a two inch lift, this handles pavement pretty well. But then there's this engine transmission combo. Let's, uh, let's go into a corner here. I'm gonna put the brakes on, tap them, throttle, and it takes a minute. So if you want to actually drive aggressively, come on, that takes a long time. This is a 2.7 liter engine with a turbocharger. Uh, so it's a big engine, which is nice, but when you're trying to get on boost, it seems to take a while. I can hear that turbo going and then we have the power. Uh, let's see, when does power hit on this thing? So I'm gonna slow down. I'm just gonna floor it. We're at 1000 RPM. Nothing, nothing, 3,500, which I guess is about normal. Uh, but if you want to drive aggressively, just be aware mm, this transmission engine package just doesn't seem to like it. Now there's a few really, really cool things about this truck that go beyond just this trim package. And that's the fact that first off, you have three different variations of this engine, uh, two part numbers, but three different power outputs. and you can actually get a reflash from the manufacturer to add more power. Similar to what I did with my Ranger. I added a lot more power to my Ranger with just a reflash. That is so cool. I love it when manufacturers do that. Also, this has now moved to the six lug wheel, which means it uses the same wheels as a Silverado. So if you have some sweet Silverado wheels, but you want a slightly smaller truck, keep them, bolt them right on. Uh, I love it when manufacturers do things like that. Even though this is the base base trim, essentially, it does have some nice safety features. We got blind spot monitoring, we got collision mitigation, and this even has adaptive cruise control, which is a nice feature. Of course, my Ranger Tremor also has that at the same price point. Oh, and I have to talk about, this thing does have auto four wheel drive. And auto four wheel drive is really great for people who don't wanna fuss with four high, four low, two high, you know, when do you turn on four wheel drive, all that stuff. You just don't have to worry about it. Just put it in auto and it'll figure it out when, you, when it needs to, you know? So if you're in like mixed conditions, because you don't always want to be in four wheel drive. On dry pavement, absolutely you do not drive in four wheel drive, but you can put it into auto. So that if you're on spotty like snow and pavement and that kind of stuff, you can absolutely get the best possible traction. If there's any slip, it engages four wheel drive automatically. It's kind of a nice safety thing. So if, you are, if you're down with the four wheel drive for safety, that's a really good choice to go with. And that's something that Ford doesn't even offer in the Ranger right now. I'm not even sure if they're gonna offer it in the new Ranger. Uh, again, for some people, that does not matter. Personally, I used to really want auto four wheel drive, but I'm kind of getting to the point now where I'm like, eh, I just don't really find it as that much of an issue. And I feel like I need to point out here that a lot of the things that I'm complaining about are fixed with the ZR2, which we will test later. Uh, it's not available to drive yet, but when it is, we'll definitely give a full review of it. And the ZR2 is, I mean, in addition to offering a front locker and all the stuff that is good about this vehicle, you also get some more physical buttons. You get a nicer interior, you know, it's, it's just nicer. I think that when they said they wanted to make kind of like a more entry level version, they kind of went a little too entry level. You know, basing this on the cheapest of the cheapest of the LT uh, trims, maybe that was a little much. What they need to look at is like what Toyota does with its TRD off-road trim. Yeah, they have one that's kind of at this level, but then they also offer the premium for a little bit more. 
So you don't have to jump all the way to a ZR2. You can you know, jump just a little bit. So in Toyota's case, you don't have to jump all the way to a TRD Pro. You can have the slightly tuned down features, uh, but still have a nice interior. Uh, but GM, Chevy, they say, now, you want to save some money, you get the super cheap interior. And oh man, that, it kind of ruins it for me, you know, which is disappointing. And I think that's about it for today. In the future, we are going to have more content with this brand new Colorado, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also hit like and leave a comment below. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching.